Because see, some folk going to dislike you no matter what. They just don't like you. Now, if somebody else was where you were, they'd be happy for them, but they cannot be happy for you. So stop trying to please people who can't be happy about what God is doing in your life and just make it known to the people that God tell you to make it known to. Psalm 105, verse 1. Psalm 105, verse 1. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. This is really what I want us to see. Make known his deeds among the people. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. But again, this is the primary verse. It says to righteous folk that we have a duty. We have a responsibility to do a number of things, but I'm only going to deal with one this morning. We have a duty. We have a responsibility as believers to make known the Lord's deed. It's my duty to make known the Lord's deeds. This word make known has to do with, in one sense, to make others aware of. I want to make it known. It's not known to everyone. I want to make it known. It also has to do with to proclamate or to publicize something. I want to I wanna spread something. I want to make something known to people. But it also has to do with to bring forth revelation or to reveal something. See, to a lot of people, certain things are hid. But then it becomes our job as God blesses us to make known the things that he has done and the things that he's doing. We have to make it known. Based upon that, look at somebody and say the subject this morning. Make known the Lord's deeds. Look at somebody else and say make known the Lord's deeds. Wonder do you see it as your duty? Wonder do you look at it as an obligation that you have. That when the Lord does certain things, I have a duty to make it known. Now notice what the psalmist wants to make known. He wants to make known his or the Lord's deeds. Where deeds deals with the acts of the Lord, the doings of the Lord, or the works of the Lord. And we don't need to be as others are without understanding in that some people think that God is no longer doing. They feel like what God has done is all he's going to do. 
But when you live like that, you live a life with no expectation for God to fulfill his word. Or can I break it down? You leave no room for God to show out in your life because you believe that what he has already done is all he's going to do. But I want to say to you that our God is a living God. And it ain't all about what he has done. It is yet about what he's doing. Oh, I wonder do you have faith to let somebody know. And it's also going to be about what he's going to do. But it is our obligation to make known his deeds. Says to me. That when God does something for me, he wants me to be willing to make that known. And I want to say to you, whenever God really gets to moving in your life, everybody's not going to want to hear what it is that you have to say. Come on. And sometimes God will require that you make a thing known several times to the same person or group of folk. And if you ain't careful, you'll be saying, Lord, Lord, I done told them what you did for me one time, Lord. But the Lord said, hey, you going to tell them again. You going to make it known again. Because I actually found out that people will get upset with you for making known the Lord's deeds. Oh, I must not have nobody that, 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 that regularly makes known the deeds of the Lord. Because if you did, you would recognize that everybody is not going to be excited about your news or about what you came to proclamate. Everybody don't want to hear your testimony. And I come to tell you, it's sad when you hear believers say stuff like, I've heard that testimony before. But yeah, did it do for you what God wanted it to do when the testimony came if it didn't you heard it in vain because whenever you really hear about the deeds of the Lord it should move you or stir you to give your God some praise I don't have to just be about me if you get up and tell what God did for you I'm gonna be happy because I know we serve the same God that's the reason the psalmist starts off by saying give thanks to the Lord when you begin to make known the Lord's deeds, everybody is not going to be happy with you. I'm going to have to break this down. Which says to me and you that you can actually lose friends for making known the Lord's deeds can actually call somebody that you thought liked you to roll their eyes at you because you made known what the Lord did for you. And they didn't want to hear it. See, it's our duty. But listen to me, saints. It's our duty not just to do it here at the church. It's an obligation. That we make it known. Listen to me. Wherever God leads us to do so. That means you may have to make known. His deeds. Standing in the line at Dollar General. You may have to look at somebody in front of you or in behind you. Who's seeing what you're purchasing. Or how much you're purchasing. And they're like wow. But then you have to let him know, the Lord is so good to me. He's blessed me to be able to do this right here. You're making it known. You're making it known. Now, when you make known his deeds, it's not, oh, look at me. But it's, oh, look at God. Come on. Come on, I said it's not, oh, look at me. Look how great I am. Look how wonderful I am. Look what I can do. Oh, no, no, no. It's all about look at what my God can do. Look at how wonderful he is. 
So it's not all about us, but it's about making known his deeds. Notice Psalm 9. Notice Psalms 9 in verse number 1. Psalm 9 and 1. I will praise you, O Lord, with my whole heart, and I will tell of all your marvelous works. I will praise you, O Lord, with my whole heart. But this is what I want you to see. And I will tell of all your marvelous works. This tale has to do with I will talk. I will talk of all. Somebody shout all. all. Of your marvelous what? Works. I will tell. I will talk about. All of your marvelous works. We have to be careful how we use our mouth. Because sometimes we guilty of talking about things that are vain. Somebody didn't like that. There are folk that love to talk. They love to tell it, but what they're talking, what they're telling is unprofitable. It's not anything that's going to help somebody else. It's empty talk. But the psalmist is going to be purposeful in how he uses his mouth. Because he's going to use his mouth to tell of the marvelous works or deeds of his God. See, we have to be careful that we don't get caught talking, but what we talking about, we shouldn't even be in the conversation. Now, one reason God wants us to talk or he wants us to tell it is because of the unsaved of the unredeemed. He wants us to make known his deeds so that those who are not saved, we can witness to them that they might receive salvation. You know God delivered you from a certain thing. But yet he puts you in front of people who are battling and can't get over what you know God helped you to get over. He may use your mouth to make known his deeds so that that person don't think they're going to have to live like that forever. No, he's going to require you. He's going to say, look, it's your duty to let them know that you used to be an alcoholic, but I freed you from that bondage. Now make known my deeds. Tell them what I did for you. Tell them how I brought you out. Tell them how I changed your life. Don't you set up there and let them think it was your job. Let them know Yes, your job good, but I even gave you that. Your job came from me. You have to make it known. Why? Because there are people trapped in bondage thinking that they cannot do better. And so that's the reason God will require it of us that we make known what he done. What he done. What he done. Why? Because I'm witnessing. I'm using what God did for me so that somebody else might get saved. I'm letting a backslider know, don't you dare give up because I backslid, but God restored me. Oh, come on. You, you got church for act like they ain't never backslid. Some of us, some of y'all done backslid seven times. But look how good God has been to you. You didn't get it right overnight. You didn't get it right in 48 hours. It took more than 72 hours. But look how blessed you are. You have a duty to let somebody know. 
that if they fall, don't you stay down. You got to get up. That's when God will use even a fall to make known how good he is to people that feel like nobody cares. But then he'll use you. Come on, somebody. I said, then he'll use you. That's when, when you're around your family, you can't afford just to be talking what everybody else talking. At times you can. But then there'll come a time God don't want you in that conversation. He wants you over here talking about what he's able to do. Come on. Can I preach to my young people? Young folk, y'all got to realize if you truly save, you got to make known God's deeds in the schoolhouse and on the college campus. You got to let folk know the same way God keeping you, he can keep them. Come on. You ain't going to be like everybody. You ain't going to talk what everybody else talking. Even certain slang sayings that folks say, we can't get so caught up that we sound just like the world. Our talk got to be different. Oh, preach that thing, Pastor. And sometimes you got to recognize God has strategically placed you in a certain place so that you can talk about what he did. You ain't on that job just to be there, sister. You got to talk about the goodness of your God. You ain't just there, brother, just to be there. But you're there to make known God's deeds. Do you know there are people strung out on drugs? Who think nobody who is as hooked as they are can ever be delivered? But then God will say to you, who was strung out, hey, time for you to talk. And some of us be like, Lord, I don't want these folk to know that I was doing such and such and such and such. You ain't ready. You ain't ready to fulfill your obligation. They are men that as long as you could tell the difference between a boy and a girl, you start chasing them girls. Oh, y'all didn't catch that. I said, as soon as you knew the difference. Because <laughs> there was a time I didn't know a difference. I play with a girl like she's a boy. Push her down, tackle her. We were playing tackle football. We were young. We girls. Hitting them too. And sometimes they were scoring touchdowns on you because they were faster and stronger. Two years go by. Same girl you were tackling, ready to play football, but now you look at her like, when you grow them? <laughs> then you might tackle them. Then you say, Surely a soul. <laughs> but see, there are men who still think they the dog and the dog got to chase the cat. <laughs> see, but then God going to say to you, tell it. Tell them that you faithful. Tell them that you happy. Tell them that you in love. Tell them that you blessed. Tell them that you happy. Good God and name about two or three brothers standing, but, but sometimes, brother, you got to make known his deeds. I don't go to no stinking club no more. I got to make known his deeds. He brought me out of them streets. There are folks in here so drugs you never would have thought. Sold drugs. There are folks in here that were locked up before. That you didn't even know done spent time behind bars. Yeah. Spent the night in jail. Spent weeks, months. Some may even still be on papers. See, you need folk out there who feel like when they done messed up, when they own them papers, ain't no way they gonna prosper. Man, I got a felony. Ain't nobody gonna hire me. But then you come along and you say, hey, look, I had a felony. 
when God told me create my own business. When God blessed me with a job and I was honest about the felony, but they said it didn't matter that I was the man for the job. See, see, he. Come on, that's real talk. That's real talk. And there are women in here who have not always been ladies. You ain't always cross your legs when you sit down. Come on. Now you're so delicate. <laughs> With your expensive perfume. A perfume. Some of us don't know the difference, but see, you done got so sedated. And now all of a sudden you walk around people like you were like you an angel. Even though you know biblically wasn't no women angels. I'm just gonna throw that in now. Then you got people that are broke. They in poverty. God will tell you, tell them what I did for you. Tell them how I bless you with that, with, with that nice house. You stand up there, Lord, these folk, I don't really want nobody to know about it. What? Because, see, some folk going to dislike you no matter what. They just don't like you. Now, if somebody else was where you were, they'd be happy for them, but they cannot be happy for you. So stop trying to please people who can't be happy about what God is doing in your life and just make it known to the people that God tell you to make it known to. And if he tell you to share it with haters, don't get bent out of shape when they growl, when they bark and frown. Look at Psalm 105. That's some good stuff. Some of us don't talk enough about God's deeds. But you want me to tell you who saints do brag on? The devil. Some of y'all talk more about what the devil doing than what God doing. Y'all know any saints like every time you come around, they talking about trouble, talking about what the devil doing. You know, the devil busy. If you're the next time I tell you that you can look at him and say, and God busy too. God busy blessing for God busy helping for God busy delivering for God busy counseling death. God busy releasing better. God busy grand supernatural increase. God busy healing for. Come on, look at your neighbor and shout to him or her. God is busy. Look at one more person and say, Did you hear what I said? God is busy. Shout at him, he busy blessing me. But see, folk who ain't got nothing to tell, all they want to talk about is negativity. Do you know God is positive? I don't want to be hanging with for everything you got to say negative. Because I will ask you, is there anything positive happening for you? Is there anything good? And some of us can't testify. For talking about the devil. Notice the latter clause of verse 1. Make known his deeds among the people. Watch this. Sing to him. Sing psalms to him. See, don't just sing at the church. Get a tune that you sing on the job. And then make somebody say, what you so happy about? What you over here singing about? What you over here mumbling? You know, you know, I seen you turn. What, what, what that turn mean you did? <laughs> you allowed to be in Walmart. They go, Lord, have mercy. But one of my stores, Best Buy. When I go in Best Buy, I get happy. And see, so you need to be happy. So that folk may just ask you, 
What you so happy about? They do it if you frown. Go in the show and just start frowning. Just start, ooh, you didn't make it no. And folk gonna be like, what the? You're gonna see people looking at you like, man, get out of the way at all. But then when you happy, walking around in the store, then when you purchase something that costs a lot, but when you go in there and you add a piece, and they said, yo, you, you gonna get that? I said, yeah, that's the final piece. I got, I got this whole thing. I got all this. You do? Yeah. <laughs> By the way, some of y'all looking at me, you ain't ready for God to bless you. See, one, one, one preacher asked a famous question, can you stand to be blessed? Because see, blessed folk got to talk about the one who blessed them. You may not be able. You may not be able to hang with me. You might not be able to handle how I talk. Because I talk as if there are no limits. I know they taught you. I know they raised you there. The sky is the limit, but God owns the sky. There is no limit with God. Can you hang with somebody like that? Some of you, your mind will be blown if you just hang with somebody one day and they just say, hey, let's go to that dealership and look at some cars. And it's all the high-end cars. I mean, probably ain't nothing on the lot under 100000 See, some of you looking crazy already. Some of you looking like, why would we do that? Some folks look around, I, 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 I missed it. <laughs> but what you gonna do if somebody ride and they say, I'm, I'm going over here and look at these houses over here, this new neighborhood they just built. And they, you ain't talk, you know everything over there, 350 or above. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about over there. Girl, take me home first. I ain't going. But see, I got to make known. I got to tell it. I got to talk about it. I got to tell you that you can wonder shop in one season. And then God will say, okay, the season for looking is over. Now it's time to get. Now it's time to purchase. But see, he wants you to tell Thank you for watching A Word for Deliverance with Pastor Leonard Cochran of A Place of Refuge Noonan. A place of refuge is located at 10 Fisher Alley in the city of Noonan, Georgia. If you would like to visit us, our worship times are every Sunday at 1015 a.m. and Wednesdays at 715 p.m. To order today's message on CD, please call the church office at 770-252-3855 and reference the order number on the screen.